Um, so real quick, I would like to do some introductions for those who are less familiar with uh, the faces you see on the screen and some faces you don't see on the screen. Uh, my name is William. I'm the founder and CEO of The Sketch Effect. And the best part of my job is working with this incredible team. Uh, we have an amazing team of operators, administrators, artists, you name it. We've got the most talented people on the planet here at The Sketch Effect. And I just love working with this squad. So real quick, we have Meg Easterbrook. Actually, no, not Me Meg. What's Meg Harrison. Harrison. Meg Harrison just got married last week, mm -hmm. um, which is so exciting. Meg is our director of operations. I know that this was not the ideal season to have a wedding, but we're happy for you. Hopefully you're enjoying married life under quarantine, but um, everyone give a round of applause to Meg. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Also, we have Jai Alanu, who is based in Los Angeles. And I forgot to mention, um, uh, I'm based in Atlanta right now. Meg's in Atlanta. Most of us are here in Atlanta today. But Jai is one of our live artists. He's in Los Angeles, does a fantastic job, super talented guy. So say hey, Jai. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> also, we have Alejo Porras, who is one of our live artists, also our creative lead at the Sketch Effect. Uh, Alejo is going to be live sketching this webinar. So, you know, at the Sketch Effect, we are all about show and tell. So while we are telling you some things, Alejo is going to be showing you the same things in real time. So you see he's got his iPad there. He hmm. is actually sketching live and the picture you see on your screen is his live sketch. And so he's going to be creating this on the fly um, without any kind of prior planning. And it's really exciting. So make sure you watch him. And then off screen, we have Abby, Sydney, and Tori, who are, are part of our operations and business development squad. Um, they're going to be monitoring the chat. They're going to be fielding questions in the Q&A, and they're uh, supporting us behind the scenes. And I'll give a shout out to the rest of our team. We have a network of artists all over the country. We have uh, animators and illustrators that aren't on this webinar, and they do a great job at their work as well. So a few housekeeping items. Number one, I mentioned our chat feature, which is active now. Um, so thanks for using that. We're actually gonna be turning that off in a few minutes. So just as a quick heads up, we'll be turning that off. However, we want you to engage with us. So there is a Q&A feature also at the bottom of your screen. And so please, please, please submit questions. We're eager to know what's on your mind, what you're curious about. This is kind of a new thing for a lot of us. So please submit questions and we'll answer those at the end. And then the final thing is to go into, the final reminder is to go into full screen mode. You know, we are, we love our visuals here at the Sketch Effect, so click that little button, make your screen as big as possible, and uh, enjoy the visuals. So real quick, before we begin, um, our number one goal today for you guys is to add value. Uh, we know these are uncertain times, your time is limited, you're probably busier than you've ever thought you'd be adapting, and so we hope the next 40 minutes or so just add some value to your work, to your life, to whatever it is you're doing. Um, specifically, we want you to walk away with a few ideas for how to make your next virtual meeting better. You know, at the Sketch Effect, we are all about uh, helping our clients host better meetings, have better meetings, and that includes virtual meetings as well. So we want to add value. We know your time is precious and limited. And so hopefully you'll walk away with a few ideas uh, to help you um, do better at your work. So where are we going today? Like I said, we'll be here for hopefully about 40 minutes all in. We'll give you a little time back at the end. We got about 25 minutes or so of content that we'll walk through um, and then we'll save Q&A at the end. Now the bulk of the content is gonna be around what we consider to be the top four pain points of a virtual meeting. Um, and then spoiler alert, we're gonna offer a few suggestions, some ideas that we at the Sketch Vet can provide to help alleviate those pain points and help you host better virtual meetings. And then we'll wrap up with the Q&A. And um, I want to say that I know in our audience, we've got a lot of folks here today. We've got some clients in the audience. It's good to see some familiar names. Maybe have some prospective clients who are trying to assess whether or not this would make sense for your virtual meetings and events. We're happy you're here too. And I know we've also got some other artists and some other graphic reporters out there, um, some other practitioners, and we're so glad that you're here too. This is kind of a new frontier as we transition to a virtual professional landscape. And so whatever we can do to support each other as a community and offer tips and suggestions to one another, I think is great. So the Sketch Effect, who is the Sketch Effect? I'll introduce us real quick as a company. We are a visual communications company. And what that simply means is that we use the principles of visuals to help our clients communicate their ideas more effectively. 
we use sketching, we use animation, we use doodling, we use design. Whatever it is, if it's visual, we want to use that to help our clients make their ideas more understandable, more memorable, more shareable, and more fun. Um, we're also a culture first company and we are guided by six core values. And these core values are very important to us. They inform how we behave as a team, how we treat our clients, and even how we do our work. And so as a quick run through of those, the first one is positivity, which is that for every interaction we have, whether it's with a client or a vendor or the mail guy or each other, we want to brighten others' days. We want to be a bright spot in people's days. Um, which is especially valuable these days because we need a little more brightness in the world. Um, number two is excellence. Excellence, we're committed to delivering an excellent product. We want to put the, our best, most excellent work out into the world. Number three is courage, which we define as doing scary things, tackling big goals, trying things out. We love to do this with our clients when they have an exciting idea or something new that they want to try. We love to partner with clients and kind of bring that courage to the table and try new things. Number four is integrity which is important to us. We want to do the right thing always. And then the last two core values are especially important these days, which are whimsy and adaptability. Whimsy we define as having fun. We want to have fun as a team. We want to embed fun in the work we do. We want to bring fun to the work we do with our clients. And then finally adaptability, which we define as happily adjusting with confidence. And I think we can all agree that whimsy is more needed now than ever. There's enough heaviness in the world these days. And so adding a little fun is always, always a good thing. And then also adaptability. We're all learning to be a little bit more adaptable as we transition to our new uh, reality. And then finally, we are guided by a mission statement, which the mission statement has not changed, whether it's in person or virtual. It is the same. And our mission is simple. It is to make ideas understandable and actionable through awesome visual communication. So understandable, you know, we want our clients' ideas, we want their messages to be understandable. We want people to be able to comprehend it, for them to light up, to have that aha moment. But then we also want it to be actionable. We want it to trigger an action, to lead to a result, to lead to an outcome. And, uh, and we do that all through visual communication. We love visuals. We're excited about visuals. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But first, I want to talk about virtual meetings. Um, this is sort of the meat of our conversation today is all about virtual meetings, webinars, webcasts, whatever you want to call it. We're all in, mer in more virtual meetings now than we ever thought we would be. And let me just start off by saying that virtual meetings are awesome. I love virtual meetings. and I'm so, so incredibly grateful that we live in an age where we can still conduct business virtually. We can still meet virtually. I'm glad that we live in the 21st century where technology allows us to carry on remotely even when we cannot meet in person. So I'm super grateful that we have virtual meetings as an option. However, however, virtual meetings are still virtual. There's still a screen in the way between you and your audience, between you and your team, between you and your customers. Um, and as we've done more and more of, these, more of these virtual meetings, we have recognized that there's several pain points. I'm sure there's a lot of them. And if you have any, send them to us because I'd love to know what are the pain points for you. But we feel like there's four that have risen to the top, especially as it relates to um, communication and, uh, and working in a professional context. So I'm going to run through those four pain points, and then we'll keep going. So pain point number one, and hopefully nobody's doing this right now, but with pain point number one is that distraction is a click away. Distraction is a click away. With a virtual meeting, it's so easy to grab your mouse and to hover over and click on Facebook or click on a blog or click on your, your Gmail or your email or your, your Gchat or your text messages. It's so easy to click away to something that's more shiny, more interesting, more compelling than the virtual meeting webinar or webcast that you're in. Again, I hope this is not the case. Um, hopefully you're enjoying watching Alejo sketch, um, but with virtual meetings, distraction is a click away. And with a virtual meeting, it's so easy to do because you're incognito. Even if your screen is on, it's still easy just to click away. No one will ever know. Meanwhile, you've tuned out of the meeting and you're looking at the latest Tiger King you know, episode recap or, or whatever people look at when they're not paying attention to meetings. So that's pain point number one, distractions to click away. Pain point number two is that people aren't aligned on virtual meetings. It's really hard to get alignment. Um, at the Sketch Effect, we have worked in hundreds and hundreds of in-person meetings, 
And I can already say that it's difficult to align a team or align an audience in person. It's even harder when there's a screen in the way. You know, being on the same screen does not mean you're on the same page. And I think a lot of people miss that. Uh, they think that, oh, the virtual meeting is the same. We're all here. We're all talking. But in a virtual context, there's more misunderstandings. There's more miscommunication. It's more challenging to document action steps or what happens next. Um, so overall, it's just difficult to align a team when um, you're in a virtual meeting or a webinar or a webcast. So pain point number three is that um, the novelty of a virtual meeting is wearing off. The cool factor, the excitement, the newness of a virtual meeting is wearing off. I know if, you, if you're like me, during the first few weeks of our new quarantine, new normal, um, you know, jumping on that Zoom meeting or that webinar was really fun and exciting because you know, it's different, it's new. Maybe you had a big team meeting and you had all your you know, faces in a big mosaic on your screen and you took a screenshot of it and you shared it out on social media or whatever it was. Um, I did that, I know many of y'all have done that and that's fun, that was cool. Um, but here's the truth, we're now a few weeks into this, we don't know when this is going to end and virtual meetings are starting to feel like regular meetings, they're starting to feel mundane they're starting to feel tired they're starting to feel normal and unfortunately most meetings tend to be a waste of time most meetings tend to be unproductive um, and so with virtual meetings the novelty's worn off and it's starting to feel like any other meeting and then the fourth pain point is that with the virtual meeting sending effective follow-up is really 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 difficult um, you know, picture this, the meeting ends, you take your mouse, you click on the little button to exit the virtual meeting or the webinar, and then what? What happens next? Uh, the typical follow-up looks like this. You get an email, attached is the slide deck that we all went through. Make sure you look at it. Okay, I got a PowerPoint. Or maybe it's an email that says, attached is the video recording of our virtual meeting. Okay, so who has time to watch all 60 minutes of your, of your you know, recap on a, on a video? Or maybe it attaches a Word document with the 10 pages of notes that our, our note taker took. Um, so that's typically what the follow-up looks like. And that form of follow-up is great. There's value to that. There's a purpose for all of those forms of follow-up. But the reality is they're not as effective as they could be, especially for a busy professional population, especially for people who, whose time is limited. They just want to know what they need to know. They want to review the meeting. It's just difficult with that kind of follow-up. So those are the four pain points that we've identified. Number one, distractions that click away. Number two, people aren't aligned. Number three, the novelty of virtual meetings is wearing off. And number four, follow-up is hard. And so I promised you a pivot, um, and the spoiler is here, which is that we at the SketchFact firmly believe that all of these pain points can be addressed with a little visual communication. Like I said, we love visual communication. We love visual learning. We're super fired up about it, we think it's awesome, but don't just take my word for it, the science also backs it up. So if you bear with me for about three minutes, I'm gonna drop a little bit of science on you. This is the TED Talk portion of this. Um, but the science really backs up the fact that visual communication and visual learning is the most powerful channel of human learning there is. Um, it's clear, the science is settled, and there's really four, four ways that um, visual communication is so powerful. And there's a bonus fifth one, which I'm gonna give you. So the first way, the first uh, thing is that visual communication or visual learning makes ideas more efficient. It makes ideas more efficient. It, the, the truth is that it's just faster to watch, to watch a video or look at a picture, your brain processes it faster. In fact, I saw one data point that said that visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than text. That's amazing. I don't, I don't even know how to, how to process that. It blows my mind, but but I believe it. Um, number two is that visual communication makes ideas more understandable. Um, it just makes ideas more comprehensible. It's easier to grasp, latch onto, to really, to really understand. And again, the data backs this up. Um, I read in one journal that 83% of human learning occurs visually, which is incredible. That means that the other three channels, which is verbal, auditory, and kinesthetic, that those comprise 17% of human learning. So again, a testament to the power of visual learning. I also read one study which was super interesting. It said that people who follow directions with text and illustration 
do 323% better than people who follow directions without illustrations, which is amazing. And if you're building an Ikea desk, then your instructions have only illustrations, which is, which is great. I love an Ikea instruction manual. Um, number three is that visual communication makes learning, makes ideas more memorable. There's something about a picture that just sticks in your brain. You know, we all remember faces, but we have a hard time with names. Um, I know I do at least. Um, and again, the data backs this up. I read one study which said that people remember, on average, people remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, but 80% of what they see and do, which is amazing. Um, another bit of data states that retention of information three days after a meeting or other event is six times greater six times greater when information is presented visually and verbally than when that information is presented only verbally. So if you want people to remember an idea, it's not, just, it's not enough just to talk about it or to kind of write it out, but you need to complement it with visuals to make it more memorable. And then number four is the shareability. Visual learning just makes ideas easier to share. It's just more fun and easier to share a picture or a video or a meme or a GIF or whatever it is, it's just more fun to share visual content. And in fact, I, re I read this one uh, social media study which said that visual content is 40 times more likely to get shared on social media than uh, other types of content, which is incredible. And then finally, I promised you a fifth one. And the fifth one is that visual learning just adds a cool factor. It just, it's just cool. People love visuals. It's fun. It's fun to see color in drawings and images. And so we love visual communication. The science backs it up about how effective and powerful it is. And for us at the Sketch Effect, visual communication takes two forms. The first is video. So we produce, we're not gonna talk about video today, but um, if you wanna know more about it, let us know, we'd love to talk about it. But we have an in-house animation team. Well, actually they're not in-house, they're in their own houses right now, but we have an in-house full-time animation team at the Sketch Effect. We make whiteboard videos, motion graphics, 2D, animation, all those great things. So if you want to know more about it, let us know. Vis video is an awesome form of visual communication. But the one we're going to talk about today is the live sketching. Um, live sketching is our other main service, our other form of visual communication. And we love live sketching. And if you've worked with us before, if you're a client, you know what this is. Um, there's other terms for it out there, including graphic recording or visual notes or sketch notes or graphic facilitation. There's a lot of ways to describe it. But for those who are a little bit less familiar, I'll give a, a little bit of an overview. And we define it very, very simply. Uh, we define live sketching as the real-time visualization of spoken content. The real-time visualization of spoken content. It's as simple as that. And so I want to emphasize a few factors or a few, uh, a few things when it comes to live sketching. The first one, which I mentioned, is that real-time factor. Uh, so live sketching, for the most part, is live. It's in real time. Uh, historically, it's been in a live meeting context, uh, a ballroom, conference room, a uh, trade show, a booth, whatever it is, it's done in real time. Now, there's some ways to do it that's not real time, like a pre-populated sketch or something that's sketched uh, from uh, an audio or recording, and that's all great, but most of the time, this is happening in real time. The second thing I'd like to emphasize with live sketching is that it's based on active listening. In fact, this is the most critical skill that our team of artists bring to the table. Now, when it comes to live sketching and graphic recording and visual note taking, the artwork tends to get all of the glory. Like you can see Alejo's sketch. It looks so cool. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the color and the drawings and the content he's capturing. But really the most critical skill that Alejo brings to the table and Jai brings to the table and our other live artists bring to the table, the most critical skill is their ability to listen effectively. Um, because if they're not capturing accurate content, then the sketch is not gonna be an effective representation of the meeting and of the ideas. So that active listening part is so critical. And then the, the third component of, of live sketching is the synthesis. So the artist is working real time, they're actively listening, but they're not capturing each and every word. They're not capturing each and every little idea. What they're doing is they're synthesizing. They're filtering, they're, they're zoning in on those core ideas, the most salient points, the big takeaways, the big themes. They're synthesizing that to produce a snapshot of those big ideas. And then the fourth component of live sketching is the fun one. It's the sketching part of it. 
It's the visualization. It's when the artist takes all of those big ideas and brings it to life through pictures and color and typography and icons and images and all that fun stuff that makes it really, uh, really exciting. And so if you've worked with us before the sketch effect, you know that traditionally, like I said, this happens during a conference or a board meeting or a brainstorm or a workshop or, or um, you know, a trade show. Well, things have obviously changed. Uh, we're all aware of it and the entire world is now virtual. Everybody in the professional world and the non-professional world is conducting meetings virtually. And the good news is that at sketch effect, we can apply the same a uh, live sketching uh, service to a virtual meeting. Um, it's really cool and it's really not that much different than an actual in-person live sketching experience. Um, real quick, how it works is simple. The artist dials in to your meeting or logs in or whatever, not dials in, this isn't 1999. They log into your meeting and they become a participant in your meeting, whether using Zoom or some other video conferencing platform. And then they listen, they actively listen, they synthesize and they sketch in real time. Traditionally, or, or typically we do it on an iPad, but it can be done on a, a virtual, a, a, a digital tablet or some other type of digital sketching medium. And uh, they can either be a fly on the wall, sort of listening and producing sketching sort of behind the scene, which becomes a deliverable after the fact, or what we suggest is they can share their screen for everyone to watch as the artwork unfolds. And we love remote notes. We call this remote notes, remote visual notes, um, or, or virtual live sketching. We love remote visual notes for a lot of reasons, but really because it addresses those four pain points I mentioned in a very direct and very tangible and really easy way. And so just to jump back to those pain points real quick, um, pain point number one is that distraction is a click away in a virtual meeting and what remote notes does, what remote visual notes does is it keeps people engaged. It keeps people engaged with what's happening in your virtual meeting. It gives them something to watch. You know, we kind of joke about it. We consider it a good distraction um, because instead of clicking away to some other shiny distraction, they're gonna be looking at this awesome visual which is actively reinforcing the ideas coming out of your meeting or your webinar or your pitch or whatever it is. Um, you know, there's something mesmerizing about watching a live sketch unfold. There's something, there's something really exciting and mesmerizing about watching an artist do their craft live. And so we believe that remote notes, remote visual notes provides that element of mesmerization. Is that a word? I don't know. It mesmerizes audiences as their meeting unfolds, which also reinforces the content to make it more effective. So that's pain point number one and how remote notes sort of soothes that pain. Number two is that pain point about alignment. You know, I mentioned that being on the same screen does not mean you're on the same page. And what remote notes does is it literally keeps people on the same page. They're literally on the same image. And so seeing ideas visualized helps people track with one another. It helps people know what they've covered, what, uh, what ideas have been discussed, what, you know, what ground the meeting has covered, helps people track with one another. It helps prevent those miscommunications, those misunderstandings, and also provides a really tangible way to visually document action steps or next steps, whatever that looks like. So that's pain point number two. Number three, we talked about how the novelty of a virtual meeting is wearing off. Well, virtual sketching or virtual uh, live sketching really adds that fun creative element. It really adds that pop and sizzle, it spices things up, makes your virtual meeting cool, makes your webinar interesting. It gives people something to talk about and uh, helps to, again, add that cool factor that is so critical in a meeting, whether it's virtual or in person. You know, it's always important to add that kind of fun, cool factor. And so remote virtual notes does that. And then number four, the follow-up. This is probably the pain point that I'm, I'm most excited about in terms, of, in terms of soothing this pain point. You know, with a virtual meeting, I said follow-up is really difficult. And with remote visual notes, with virtual live sketching, you get amazing takeaways. You give your attendees an awesome follow-up material. Um, instead of getting that PowerPoint or instead of getting that, you know, 60-minute video recording or that 10-page uh, note document, they get a picture. Um, they get an image of what they learned. And so remote visual notes makes following up super easy, 
super effective and uh, and really really fun for you as the event organizer if you're you know if you're planning events. And so specifically from the client standpoint, I would love to kind of articulate what those deliverables look like because I'm sure that's a question you may be asking. And so when it comes to remote visual notes, we provide three different types of deliverables. And they're all uh, they're all super uh, super awesome. So the first one is simply the images. So as you can see, Alejo is sketching here. Um, when this meeting is done, in fact, very soon after the meeting is done, attendees, you guys will get a picture of this content. Uh, virtual notes is really really one of the things that's really exciting about it is that it can be turned around very quickly. So the deliverable turnaround time is almost instantaneous. Once your meeting is done about 30 minutes to an hour after, you can send your follow-ups this picture of what the meeting was all about, which is really, really cool. The second deliverable that we offer to our clients is a video time-lapse, which is really cool, really exciting. The program that we use, which is Procreate on an iPad, will export a time-lapse video of the sketch. Um, it's really awesome, it's simple, and I mentioned we have an in-house video team, and we can even take that a step further by adding music and sound effects and putting a title on there and making it a more substantive, robust video deliverable to send to attendees. Which, like we said, it's just fun to watch a video. It's much more exciting than clicking through a PowerPoint deck, um, if you're like me. And then the third one is that we can make a more robust sort of PDF booklet of all the content from your meeting. So if you had other material, other collateral, other notes, other charts that you provide, we can sort of take all of that and combine it into one solid, complete PDF booklet, which includes the sketch and the content and the notes and all those things combined, which is sort of like a, an awesome merging of all those deliverables. So that's a quick note on the takeaways and uh, part in that motorcycle outside the window. Um, a few other benefits of remote notes, and then I'm going to hand it over to Meg, who's going to talk a little bit about the process, but there's a few other benefits which I want to touch on real quick because this is a question a lot of our clients ask. Um, the first one is that remote visual notes is anytime. It's an anytime service. So, you know, Jai in theory could be in LA at 11 p.m. and could log into your, I don't know what time it would be in Paris or whatever and sketch that meeting. The time zones don't matter as long as the artist is fully caffeinated and can listen effectively. Um, the second other benefit that I want to mention is that it's anywhere. So because it's remote, because it's virtual, it doesn't matter where the artist is. Like I said, we have a team of artists all over the country, East Coast, West Coast, Midwest. Um, so it doesn't matter where the artist is or where you're broadcasting your virtual meeting from. So we can be anywhere. Number three is it's scalable. So whether you're having a virtual meeting with five to 10 people or you're webcasting to thousands, the virtual note taker can support that meeting. We also have, like I said, we have a team of artists. So if you've got breakouts, if you've got other sessions and you want multiple artists supporting multiple sessions, we can uh, come in and help support those multiple sessions. And then the last one that I'll mention is that uh, depending on the video conferencing platform you're using, as long as it has a screen share feature, we can support it with remote virtual sketching. And you know, every platform is different, so there's a little bit of uh, kind of upfront work to make sure we work out the technical, the technical glitches and make sure everything kind of is in sync. But for the most part, if you're using a mainstream video conferencing or webcast or webinar uh, platform, it can be supported with the virtual live sketching. So for a few minutes, I'm gonna hand over to Meg. Meg, like I mentioned, is our director of operations, so her world is all operations. She's gonna walk a little bit through the process. So take it away, Meg. Awesome. Well, that was great, William. Um, thank you so much. As William mentioned, my name is Meg and I'm a part of the operations team here at the Sketch Effect. And I'm really excited just to share for a few minutes on what that behind the scenes looks like as far as the operations process goes. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to share that our mission as the operations team is to set your team up for success. We want to maximize the value the value of your meeting. And so um, we really just wanna make the process as smooth and easy and fun as possible. So that's what our mission is. Um, so how do we do that? What does the process look like? So we've designed a really intentional operations process to really accomplish that mission. And so I'll share kind of the two steps that we'll highlight today. So the first, 
step of the process is really um, working alongside your team to gather the critical logistics needed. So every time you engage with the sketch effect, you will be connected with an operations coordinator and they will be your primary point of contact throughout the process. So they'll be the ones answering the questions, making sure you have all of the details that you need. And so to kick things off, they'll reach out to you to gather three main things. So the first thing that they will gather from you is the agenda. So it's really important for our artists to know the start and stop times of the sessions, along with who is presenting during the session and what the format of the presentation is going to be. So although what the artists do is very organic as far as what they're active listening and what they're capturing, it is really important for them to know the format in which it's presented. So for example, is it going to be a panel discussion? How many folks are on the panel? Or is it gonna be a more traditional um, keynote presentation? Or will the focus of the meeting be a little bit more discussion-based with your team? So that's what we gather as far as the agenda goes. And then the second part um, of materials we'll need is just to have a better understanding of the platform that you're going to use to host your meeting um, or webinar. And so we really wanna take the opportunity to get familiar because we know there's a lot of great tools out there. So we'll take the opportunity to study and look into that. And then the final um, item that we'll gather in that logistics process is the branding materials. So we wanna make sure that not only the content and the visuals captured in the graphic recording um, really maximize the value, but we wanna make sure that that follow-up deliverable is in line with your branding considerations. So we will gather your logo and that will normally be featured up in the upper right-hand corner of the graphic recording. And then we'll also work closely with you to determine that color palette. So as you see on the screen that Alejo is recording today, that's a predetermined color palette that we discussed as a team. So that's the first part of the process, really gathering that critical information, and then we'll transition into the connect portion of our process. And that's when we really like to schedule two really important calls. So the first call that we like to schedule is our pre-event call. So typically we schedule that call about a week prior to your meeting or session. And that's when we like to go over two things. So that call will be around 30 minutes to an hour. We'll have the main point of contact from your team on that call. You'll have our, your operations coordinator on the call along with the artists. And we'll discuss all the logistics that you provided our team prior. And then we'll also spend some time really focusing on your meeting and the goals of your meeting. So we really wanna maximize the value um, like we talked about, so we want to have an idea of who your audience is and what content you're going to be covering. So what is your main goal um, and your key takeaways from the meeting? That's really important for our artists to know ahead of time so they can really focus in on that. Um, it's also really important for us to know too, is there any really technical content that you're going to cover that would be uh, really helpful for the artists to know ahead of time, along with any acronyms that they would need to know. We want to make sure that um, they have a heads up on those items. Um, but after that point, we have really, um, we're set up for success and we're ready to dial in and test all of the tools. So at that point, we'd want to schedule an AV test. Um, so we would either join your run through meeting where our artists would dial in and they would make sure that they can share their screen, that they have really clear audio and that they're all set and good to go. And, um, or we can schedule that call separately if you just like to connect um, with our team. So that's really a high level overview of what the process looks like. Um, we're gonna be answering questions in a few minutes. So if anyone has any questions specifically related to our process, we'd love to answer that um, during this time or follow up over email. So that's a high level overview of our process. Um, and William, I'm gonna ha hand it back over to you. Awesome, thanks Meg. I'm going to brag real quick on our operations team. If you've had a chance to work with us, uh, you've gotten to work with Meg or maybe worked with Sydney or Tori, but we have an awesome operations team here at the Sketch Effect. They're excellent at what they do. They keep things smooth for our clients. They make it as easy and as seamless and as hands-off for our clients as possible. And so you guys do a great job. I'm happy uh, to have people like Meg and the others on the team. So real quick, we're going to wrap up and then we'll go to questions. But to summarize, you know, at the Sketch Effect, we believe that your ideas are too good to waste and that your time and that your meetings, they're too valuable to squander. And that's especially true with virtual meetings. You know, virtual meetings are awesome. They're a great alternative to meeting in person, but there are a few pain points. They can be better. They should be better. At the Sketch Effect, we're committed to making our clients' meetings 
better. We want to make them successful. We want to make you as a meeting organizer or a meeting host a rock star. Uh, we want you to be the hero. We want to help support you in that. And so just a quick note, uh, since this is a new, this is kind of a new thing for a lot of our clients, we're offering a 50% off discount to anyone who wants to try this out for the first time. That's regardless of the package or the scope of work. And so if you want to know more about that, reach out to me, uh, William at thesketchfact.com or Abby at thesketchfact.com, who I believe you've been emailing with as you've signed on for this webinar. And we'd love to work with you. So uh, let us know. Also, if you're on Instagram, we'd love for you to follow us at the Sketch Effect. And uh, we've been doing some cool content lately. And so with that, let's transition to Q&A. I know we've got a couple of good questions that have been submitted. So um, we'll invite Jai back in. Alea will keep on sketching. You'll see he'll continue to polish this sketch over the next few minutes. But um, yeah, let's dive into the questions. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for the great questions. I love seeing these come through. Um, the first question I'd love to, you to answer, William, is um, does your team host the webinar? That's a great question. So we've gotten that one a lot. It's a pretty common one. And, and we want to be clear, we're not the meeting hosts. Um, what we are going to do is come in and support your meeting. So whatever meeting you're doing, whatever platform you're using, we're going to come alongside you and support that. So you know, our expertise is the sketching, you're the host, and we want to make that as, uh, as effective as possible. So, so that's, a great, that's a great question. Great. The second question is, does your artist need our content ahead of time before the meeting, um, or how do they spend their time preparing? That's awesome. So I would love to have Jai, if you want to take a crack at answering this one. Jai is one of our, like I said, he's one of our live artists. He's been with us for many, many years, does a great job. So yeah, Jai, do you want to answer that? Like, how do you prepare? Do you get the notes ahead of time? Uh, kind of walk us through that. Absolutely. <clears throat> so um, logically, it would make sense that um, we'd like to have a little bit of information ahead of time, but too much detail actually works uh, counteractively um, because we're trying to think about what we studied as opposed to actively listening, which is uh, the most important um, aspect of graphic recording. So uh, typically, we like to get some of the high points, like Meg mentioned, um, know a little bit about the agenda, your goals. And then from there, uh, just be open to hear what it is that you're, you're saying during your meeting. Um, a lot of times during these meetings, um, you'll stress very important things. Um, sometimes you'll repeat them or the intonation of your voice will change. And we're kind of trained to listen to those things. So it's best for us uh, in preparation, just to get our colors ready to know the general um, goals of your um, meeting, and then just be present and listen. And that has turned out to be the most effective. Um, we've been doing this for several years, and we've tried different things where we kind of look at the notes uh, ahead of time. And what we found is it can actually be a little bit distracting. So we prefer to um, kind of just be present and listen. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's a good, yeah, it's, it's good for us just to get kind of the high level, what is your meeting all about, kind of understand who, who's in the room, you know, what, or who's in the, in the virtual room, uh, what is the meeting about, what is the kind of the main, the main thrust of the day, what's the agenda look like, and then as Meg mentioned, like, are there any acronyms that we need to know about, like, what is some, right. kind of like, preliminary knowledge that we need to know to at least uh, kind of jump in and participate but yeah like jai mentioned our our goal is to actively listen focus on the big ideas the themes the emotions things like that so great question yeah great the next question we have is how does live sketching work with presentations that have multiple slides um that have multiple slides like a like a, are they referring to like a powerpoint yeah multiple slides or maybe multiple screens that you would need to share yeah, so I'll speak first to the slides. So if, um, if a webinar webcast is hosting like a, like a PowerPoint, um, that's great. The artist, the artist is going to be primarily listening, like Jai said, versus just like copying down what's on the PowerPoint. Um, if there's multiple screens, that's more contingent on the platform that you're using. Um, so depending on if it's Zoom or others, I know there's different functionalities, there's different uh, ways you could have multiple screens at once. Um, here on Zoom, we have Alejo Sketch as our main screen, but we have me and Meg and Jai as like sub-screens of, pre of presenters. So there's different ways to do that depending on the platform. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully that, hopefully that answers that question. Hey, William, this question um, that's open right now is an artist question. You mind if I take that one? Yeah, I'd love to know. What, what is it? So Aaron is asking a little bit about um, how Alejo is able to achieve kind of the borderless uh, drawing here uh, on Procreate. And so um, it's a really straightforward question. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. If you go into your Procreate document, um, at the top, that bar that's typically showing, um, if you go into your actions and preferences, you can turn on project canvas. And when you turn on project canvas, um, all anyone will see is the entire canvas. So you can zoom in, you can access your palettes, and that kind of technical stuff won't show. Um, but when you project your canvas, um, all you'll see is just the entire screen. That's awesome. Yeah, and we, we've had some clients who they like to see kind of the artist's work and see all the menus and the little buttons they click and all that because what you can't see right now is that Alejo's got, he's got multiple layers, he's got his color palette, he's got all these different buttons on his screen. And so as Jai mentioned, we're just projecting the sketch. Um, and some clients love to see kind of that artistry, kind of that technical back end, but most of the time they just want to see this magical sketch as it comes to life. Uh, that's a great question from, from Aaron. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we are receiving a ton more questions, so I just want to make sure we can address some of these during our time. But the next one is, can we use any other platforms other than Zoom? Awesome. Great question. So Zoom is the one we're most familiar with. It's the one that we've actually been using for a while. And I, I will mention that this remote sketching is actually not a new service for us. We've actually been doing this for several years. It's always been sort of a peripheral kind of thing that we've offered to clients if it makes sense to support a virtual meeting. Um, so it's actually not new to us. So Zoom is the one that we've been using for the longest amount of time and it tends to work well. It's pretty user friendly. We can screen share, we can do all these things. But I know there are other platforms out there. Um, we're exploring those actively to see what makes the most sense because a lot of our clients are coming to us with recommendations about what to use and we would love to make recommendations. So we're actively exploring what, uh, what, it, what is out there, what works best. Um, but what matters most is that there is a screen, screen share functionality so that the artist can share, can kind of live stream what he or she is sketching. Uh, that's a great question. And actually, one thing that we're working on as a team is to vet all of the platforms that are out there so we can be that, uh, that resource for our clients if they're looking for recommendations. And so we'll probably host another webinar in a few weeks as we kind of unpack which platforms are the best. Um, but for now, we know Zoom is great. There's a lot of other good ones out there. What matters most is the screen share functionality. Um, but that's a great question. Great. One thing I did want to add to that, William, is that there are two different types of Zoom um, hosting platforms. So we have the Zoom meetings, um, which is where you can see the mosaic of a lot of team members dialing in. And then we're actually using the Zoom webinar. And so that gives a little bit more functionality in terms of like sharing the screen and what you can record and what the participants will see. Uh, so just wanted to touch on that really quickly. Awesome. Great. Um, so the next question is, I would love to share this with my clients. Are there any quick videos available about this offering? Yes. Awesome. So great question. Like I said, this sketch that Aleo is working on right now, we will send to everybody in a follow-up email. We will also send you the time-lapse video. So if you want to uh, actually showcase the value in the form of the deliverables, uh, we'll send them to you and you can send them on to others that want to know. However, we also will record this whole webinar and we'll host it on our website, so we'll post it there. But we have a landing page on the Sketch Effect right now, which is the sketcheffect.com slash remote dash notes. And I think the team will put that in the chat. Uh, but if you go to the sketcheffect.com slash remote dash notes, there's a little overview video there. There's some information, some examples um, of what these, this sketch, these sketches look like. And yeah, we would love to talk. And, and like I said, this is sort of a new frontier for everybody. Everyone's sort of figuring this world out. And so we would love to partner alongside you and kind of help figure it out together. You know, we were very uh, competent with the sketching and the, um, this, uh, this platform, the sketching on digital and all that. But we would love to partner with you to help make your virtual meeting as, as good, as, as awesome as possible. Great. Um, we'll just end out with one final question. Um, so I know that um, 
that a few folks have asked if they have pre-recorded content, can we actually put together um, remote modes based off of that content? So William, could you speak into that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, there's a lot of magic in this happening live, but the reality is that we can also do this from recorded content. So if you have a bunch of content or they're, you know, it's webinar content that you've had in the past that you're going to re reuse, uh, you can send us videos, you can send us audio files and our artists can do exactly what Alejo is doing now from that. So that's definitely an option and we love doing that. The process is very much the same. The only difference is that it's not, in that live setting but the deliverables are the same the goals are the same and so yeah we would love to help support anything um, that is maybe not necessarily live but it's pre-recorded or um, something from a audio or video file great well i know we do have a lot of other questions that came through and thanks to sydney and tori that have been doing a great job responding to those questions so any questions we didn't get to respond to um, live Tori and Sydney will follow up with answers. And I know Abby also will be available to follow up via email um, with any questions we didn't get to get a chance to answer. So thanks everyone for your questions. This is great. Yeah, this was great. And round of applause to Alejo. Alejo, can I interrupt you and have you just say hi for a second? I know you've been busy sketching, but I want I want the audience to know that you're a real person and not a machine. <laughs> I, I am a real person. I am. <laughs> AI is working great. Awesome. Yeah. Doing the thing right here. Yeah, there it is. So, um, yeah, so thanks, team, for being here. Thanks, everyone, for your time joining us on this webinar. Like I said, I know your time is limited. You're busy. Life is crazy. We appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time today. If you have any follow-up questions, email uh, William at the Sketch Effect or Abby at the Sketch Effect or go to the Remote Notes landing page on our website, and we would love to work together. And with that, we will sign off and um, have a great rest of your week, everybody. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Bye. You guys, thank you. Be safe.